Testing, one, two, three, four. And remember to start the arm. Um, you do the same thing, arching on the, you know, I do on the second arm. Oh. Step over to your left and do the same thing. I have to set the same thing. My foot has to be here. Yes, I'll be over. Yeah, but there's no point in the other two up there. Thank you, I can go in. Yeah, but I'll let me grab my hand. You're going to be here long enough, you're marching off in two minutes. All right, I'll go. One minute. No, this makes sense. You're not thinking, you're not visiting anything now. It's going to go through here. I'm going to just sing this and walk the mark off. Okay. Marching, we are marching, oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching, oh, we are marching in the light of God. Do 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 Marching, marching, we are marching, oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching, oh, we are marching in the light of family to that rousing, rousing start to a, a wonderful celebration this morning. You know, I've been thinking how blessed we are. We've had, we began with emancipation and now after seven days, we are back. We are celebrating independence, and I wonder how many countries have the opportunity to celebrate emancipence as we have. So let us begin, as we ought to, with God. Please join me now for the opening affirmative prayer. We recognize now that one power, that one presence, which is God, which has brought us together this morning to celebrate, to celebrate our liberation from any and every perception of otherness, to celebrate our oneness with the one, and to reignite our commitment to that within us which is God, to our inner dependence. 
And so we know now that as we participate in this service, an event already accomplished in the mind of God, we are open, we are receptive to our freedom to be, to do, to have. That freedom which impels us to move towards our greatness, our magnificence, because that is what we are called to be. And so I know this morning that each and every one of us is open, receptive to the words, the inspired words of our speaker, Reverend John, to each word of song, to each note of music, and, and, and receptive to the presence of each and every one of us here, because in fact there is only one. And so we give thanks now for this glorious celebration of who we are in God, as God, for God. And I release this word now joyously and allow it them to be activated as our respective experiences. We give thanks now that this is so. So it is. So again, I welcome you all those of you who are in the sanctuary and those who are elsewhere joining us by virtue of electronic medium. We begin now with a special chant. which you will find on the second page of the third page, sorry, of your program. At the second it is there, right on the top. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love I bring to you, peace and love. And if your mother won't come, and if your father won't come, peace and love I give to you, peace and love. If your sister won't come, and if your brother won't come, Peace and love I give to you, peace and love, peace and love, peace and love, peace and love, peace and love I bring to you, peace and love. And so now I invite you. Close your eyes, shut out the outer, be comfortable. Breathe in, peace, exhale, love. Again, we breathe in, peace. And take with you the thought, the peace and love of God fills my heart this morning.
and quietly now from that place of peace and love at the center of our beings we open our eyes turn to our program with the affirmation of divine love And so we affirm together now. Divine, Divine love, love is, is doing, doing its perfect, perfect work here and now. Divine, Divine love harmonizes. Divine love adjusts. Divine love prospers. Divine love foresees everything and richly provides every good thing for this church now. Divine love is now victorious. And so it is. So I now light the candle. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Our inspirational reading this morning is an excerpt from the spiritual meaning of freedom written by Ernest Holmes, our founder. I believe that the true spirit of democracy is a spiritual conception where there is freedom, liberty without license, and a flexibility that makes evolution possible on the foundation of freedom. As we enter into the spirit of the meaning of Independence Day, the day when liberty symbolically was conceived, the day when freedom objectively in our country was announced, we should think of it not merely as a political system or form of government, but we should think of it as a spiritual conception, an idea in the divine mind itself, taking form in human experience. We should learn to love that liberty. And in loving the idea, we should learn to tenderly and prayerfully handle the embodiment of that idea and nourish it always to greater strength. We should really conceive again the great spiritual conception of that rugged man of God who said that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. And so it is. I saw my land in the morning, and oh, but she was fair. The hills flamed upward, scorning death and failure here. I saw through the mists of morning a wave like a sea set free. Faith to the dawn returning, dark tide bright unity. I saw my friends in the morning, they called from an equal gate. Build now while a time is burning, forward before it's late. I saw my land in the morning, and oh, but she was fair. The hills flamed upward, scorning death and failure here. I saw through the mists of morning a wave like a sea set free 
faith to the dawn returning, dark tide bright unity. I saw my friends in the morning, they called from an equal gate, build now while a time is burning, forward before Thank you, thank you. Even now, as we reignite our nation to its greatness, each of us is committed to reigniting our commitment to our own greatness. And in that commitment, I now light the candle for the youth. And as I do so, <laughs> I light this candle for all of us. We behold the Christ in each other. So let us the, uh, say the blessing, which is in the middle of page two. We love you. We appreciate you. We salute the Christ in you. And we see you as shining lights onto your world. God is blessing you now. And so it is. And so we move on to our mission song. Celebrating the Temple of Light. The Temple of Light, the Temple of Light, the Temple of Light. We are a people with a vision, one with spirit on a mission. To touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate anyone who comes into contact. With us any time, night or day. The temple of light, the temple of light, the temple of light. We are a people with a vision, one with spirit on a mission to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and live. Announcements for this morning now. Now, is there anyone worshiping with us in person this morning on this special day? No, we're all family and it's so wonderful to be. Oh yes, well, for the first time, is there anyone? <laughs> I'm not seeing anyone acknowledging that. And, but if you're a first time, online worshiper we welcome you to our hearts we behold the christ in you and we invite you to join our live stream again and again let me remind you now of our weekly schedule this morning right after the service there's wisdom circle just at 10.30, to continue the exploration of Tom Johnson's Lessons from the Source. An excellent session for you to join in, because it allows us to share and to open up to each other about some of the things we learn, 
some of the things we don't understand. Then moving on from today, we go into Monday morning. First thing, six o'clock, that little ping on my phone, quiet moments in the garden. It's a time when we join Reverend John Scott on a Monday morning, a Wednesday morning, or a Friday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a refreshing and insightful early morning start to your day. Then now, on Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock, we have Spiritual Mind Healing Service. That too is a wonderful pick-me-upper to keep you focused on the path. And you may join us on the Facebook or the Zoom platform. And the link is sent out in our mailing list, so ensure that your, your contact is included there. And then now on Thursday, at 6 o'clock, join Reverend Sonia and the power the prayer power gang for an hour of communion and that comes to you via zoom again too the link is sent out on thursday mornings from our mailing list if you've not been getting it make sure you you, you call the office and get your name on the list so now classes Reverend Anne and Reverend Sonia Davidson continue their classes on Zoom based on the book of the same title, How I Used Truth. And this is excerpted from the writings of Emily Cady. Contributions for those classes, $1,200 Jamaican or US $10 for registered members and 1,600 or US $12 for other persons. And there's now an interesting article, at, at, um, event that is inviting us, a village circle. By now, you should have received your invitation by email to our August 14 village circle right here in the sanctuary. We, oh, sorry, we will be sending out a Zoom link on Friday August 12th, and look forward to Temple family turning out in our numbers. And then, most important activity for us? Oh, the village circle. Um, Sandra just um, told, reminded me, is live and on Zoom. So you have your choice. But it's nice to come. And it's a Friday evening. It's, sorry, it's a Sunday morning. <laughs> sorry. Let's get together. You're already here, so don't bother run away. So now, um, prayer support. We continue to respond to all your requests of prayer. A practitioner is available to pray with you immediately following our Sunday service. And this morning, Reverend Ann Shand is on duty and the number to call 876-289-0907. If you would like to speak to a minister, call the same number 876-289-0907 Monday to Friday from 8 to 12 midnight. We are at your service. So now, uh, that, um, to financially support our ministry, kindly visit our donate page, which is donate.templeoflightcsl.org, which has our banking details. And we thank you for your continued support and generosity and for, help, for helping us to be a beacon of light in the world. This concludes this morning's announcements. Kindly now join us in the singing of our praise song, Sweet Jamaica. The words are in your program if you are in the sanctuary and on the screen if you are online. Sweet Jamaica, sweet Jamaica, land of sunshine and wood and water, sweet Jamaica. 
Everywhere you go, you are very sure to see Rivers, valleys, mountains, and all of them pretty You can see the hand of God in the sky and tree and sun So be grateful to your Creator for sweet Jamaica Sweet Jamaica, sweet Jamaica Land of sunshine and wood and water, sweet Jamaica If the skies are full of blue or if they're full of grey Both are very beautiful in their special kind of way For here is where the hand of God paints pictures for us all Let's be grateful to our Creator for sweet Jamaica Sweet Jamaica Sweet Jamaica, land of sunshine and wood and water, sweet Jamaica. There are so many blessings that we cannot really count. God provides us everything from land and sea and mount. There really isn't any lack, and if we think right back, we should be grateful to our Creator for sweet Jamaica. Sweet Jamaica, sweet Jamaica, land of sunshine and wood and water, sweet Jamaica. Oh, nice. <laughs> Just as nice as. Oh, please remain standing. Time for the prayer of our center. The Temple of Light, center for spiritual living is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ peace, love, and joy emanate <laughs> and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light of the Christ illumines us, our center and our environment. And our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth, guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and glory forever and so it is please remain upstanding <laughs> uh, for our hymn this morning which is on oh it's on a flyer in the program and it's ours oh lord a mighty nation <clears throat> Spreading wide from sea to sea Ours, the capstone of creation Land of hope and liberty In our veins, the blood of people Out of every land and birth From the schoolhouse and the steeple Feels our freedom to the earth. Man is free and man is master. Of himself is king or slave. Stored in precious alabaster. Life is his to spend or save. Is it is to voice his feeling, is to worship or refrain. Hear the bells of freedom pealing, man shall harvest all his grain. Lo, at last the revelation comes fulfillment of the dream. God 
God has built himself a nation where the land shall be supreme. For this law let all the living joyfully their voices raise. To our God in a full thanksgiving, in a song of prayer. O Lord, a mighty nation, fruitful lands from sea to sea, from the schoolhouse and the steeple peals the bells of liberty. Thanks for those who on the altar laid their lives at freedom's call. Folks of faith who did not falter, known and unknown, we praise all. Please be seated. This, your zest and enthusiasm makes me know that you are ready for our speaker this morning, Reverend John, that you are ready to reignite your commitment to your greatness. Open your ears, your hearts, and your minds. It will be a wonderful encouragement, one that will inspire you to grow, to advance, and simply to be. Reverend John. Happy, 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 inner dependence. All Jamaica, in the sanctuary and online, wherever you are, if you are, your heart is with this nation. Celebrate with us, because as we open this morning's service, we are marching, my friends, in the light of God. And it is, no, for me, no coincidence that our founding minister, Reverend Dr. Elmer Lumsden, named us the temple of what? Light. And my friends, I think of that and I think of the mighty nation that God has built. And my heart is so full of gratitude for all that we are, all that we are becoming all that we have to celebrate as a cultural superpower on the face of this planet, as a light beaming from the Caribbean to show the world how people of every nation, of every color, of every race, of every creed can live together in harmony and beauty and love. You know, my friends, I often refer to the correctional is called, I think euphemistically, the adult correctional facility. That's a prison at Tower Street in Kingston. And I often refer to it as the University of Tower Street. Because I have learned over the last eight years in that institution as much, if not more, than I learned when I was studying the applied behavioral sciences for my master's at the great Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland in the USA. Every Tuesday morning I have a lesson in life, in love, in humanity, in divinity, a lesson that is in itself a sermon and a, a psalm of praise and thanksgiving to the God that built this mighty nation. Yes right there in the squalor of that prison, one can see the greatness of the Jamaican people, the brilliance of the Jamaican people, and our willingness to look within to find what I have titled my encouragement this morning, our inner dependence. 
And so my friends, a couple of Tuesdays ago, the superintendent of the prison said to me, John, would you um, mind addressing our summer school? They had a summer school of 100 men. So when I finished my regular program, I was escorted, you're always escorted, to uh, the summer school. And when I, as I approached, the speaker that preceded me was trying desperately to engage the, the, his audience's attention and shouting, re literally bellowing above the cacophony in the room. Everybody seemed to have been talking at once. And so as I was being introduced, I just breathed a, a quiet prayer, which I often do, that the infinite mind of God fills my consciousness with every idea I need to bring these men face to face with their spiritual magnificence and to show me how to grab their attention and hold it. And you know, friends, right there it came to me, full orbed, a chant. <laughs> so I, I taught them this chant and it just came spontaneously. A come me a come to predis when freedom calls a me this. And we're going to teach you too in a little a few moments from now. But for those of you who are unfamiliar with the evolution of the Jamaican language, to pre something is to pay, pay close attention to it. Or to pre someone, it means that you're pay, paying close attention to that um, something or that person. And so <laughs> they loved it. And even after the talk was finished, men were whistling it and, and walking outside humming it. So with the help of spirit expressing through the wonderful musical director, Angela Elliott, who doesn't like to be named, but it's spirit expressing as her, and also um, through Hanif, I want to teach you the chant. It's on a fly in your program, and it should also be online, on the screen. I come me, I come for Predis, when freedom call a me this. I come me, I come for Predis, when Jamaica shine a me this. Me say, I come me, I come for Predis, celebration time a me this. So I come, we are come for Predis, the temple of light a we this. I come, we are come for Predis, when freedom call a me this. I come, me, I come for Predis, when Jamaica shine a me this. Me say, I come, me, I come for Predis, celebration time a me this. So I come, we are come for Predis, the temple of light a we this. I come, we are come for Predis, when freedom call a me this. I come, we are come for Predis. When Jamaica shine a me this, me say I come, me a come to pre this celebration time a we this. So I come, we a come for pre this, the temple of light a we this. <laughs> oh, the sound good. Give me one more line. I ah, come, me a come for pre this. When freedom calls a me this, I come, we are come for pre this. When Jamaica shine a me this, me say, I come, we are come for pre this. Celebration time a me this. So I come, we are come for pre this. The temple of light a we this. Wow. Thank you, friends. And so, my friends, when I was finished that chant and the men were really, you know, you can't sing while, and you're bonding while you're singing, eh? But you also can't have a sideways conversation with, with your friend about how bad the breakfast was this morning and you're tired of the sloppy food. So, I mean, people were just together. And I said, what am I, how am I going to maintain this? And I told them an Anansi story, which I've shared with you before. I, I adapted it from a Middle Eastern teaching story. The story is about Anansi searching outside his house in the grass and the dirt outside his, his dwelling for something. 
And Br'er Tiger, with whom Anansi was not on the best of relations, watched him through his living room window and said, I wonder what Anansi I look for. And when he couldn't take it any longer, he called out, Br'er Anansi, what you looking for? Thought he would, you know, reach out. And Anansi said, we looking for my house key. I lost my house key. So Br'er Tiger, in an uncharacteristic gesture of good neighborliness, said, make me help you. And he joined Anansi in the street, just outside Anansi's house, looking up and down the street. And after a long time of fruitless search, Br'er Tiger straightened his aching back and said, oh, Anansi, you can't remember exactly which part you dropped the key. Anansi said, yes. Me drop it in the house. <laughs> in the house, Br'er Tiger bellowed. Then why are we searching outside when just four or five steps away in the house is where you drop the key? And Nancy said, Br'er Tiger, to tell you the truth, may I search outside because there is more light outside and it dark in the house. My friends, it is no Anansi story that a lot of us look for our freedom, our emancipation, and our independence outside when the truth is, where does it reside? Inside. Inside the house of the Lord, which is what you are. Inside your consciousness. Inside your awareness. Inside the truth of who and what you are as a beloved expression of Almighty God. And you know, as we look back over time, over this last 60 years, I'm, I'm seeing that we have somebody who has been an important part of my own history, Yvonne McCalla Sobers. When I first came to this church in 1981, she used to be on the piano. Let us welcome her. Welcome home, Yvonne. Well, she wasn't on the piano. She danced at the piano. <laughs> she couldn't keep still. And she still can't keep, keep still. Whenever she hears music, she danced. So just remind me about that because it's part of your assignment, a little from this. But in the 60s and 70s, my friends, long before I discovered the science of mind, I danced with a, a small dance company called the Eddie Thomas Dance Workshop. Yes. Um, a couple of people that I know and love that are also important parts of my history that were part of that experience. And I used to, as a young dancer, 18 or 19, put myself at the back of the room, the back of the stage, where I could watch and follow those dancers that I thought knew the dance better than I and had better technique than I did. You know, so I always danced around the back. And one rehearsal just before a show, uh, there were two, there were two ahas for me uh, during that rehearsal. One was I was six foot tall. I've lost a little of that as, over the years. And I weighed 155 pounds. And the artistic director of Blessed Memory, Eddie Thomas, who was also my friend, said, John, you are obese. You have to lose 10 pounds before opening night. 155, my way, no. So that was one aha. And the other aha was he said, and now come to the front center of the stage. So I panicked, you know. I said, but, 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 but sir, I stuttered. I, I, I don't really know the dance all that well. He said, me no. <laughs> and as long as you, you catch up around the back, you will never know the dance. John, you need to start to trust your talent and your muscular memory. And he said something that was pure science of man, although I hadn't discovered it. He said, it's all within you. Trust that intelligence within you. You know the dance. And I went front, center stage, and never again took the back seat. So my friends, that was my first lesson in inner dependence. Looking within for the truth. So it's, it's an important lesson that I want to share with you this morning because a lot of times when we begin the dance of life, we set out on this, on this amazing journey, we forget that we are the choreographer 
and we are the lead dancer. And we, there are kind of four steps. And Nancy, Brea Tiger said to Nancy, there are just four steps from where we are searching fruitlessly to where the key was actually, um, you could actually find the key. And the first step we take sometimes, because if we, if we grew up in orthodoxy, or most of us grew up anyhow, believing that life happened to us, and if we were just good enough, not cause too much bad word, don't thief, don't lie, and don't f follow the Ten Commandments, we will get through. Because life happened to us. And then we would pray. And we would pray expecting that, because we prayed all the time, not really expecting that we would get any results, kind of expecting that we would get the, what's it called, menu dialing, you know, that unembodied voice that you get when you call most places nowadays. And when we, when we did that prayer, the automatic voice interface from heaven would say something like, thank you for calling heaven. Now pre this. Remember, to pre something is to pay what? Careful attention. For English, press one. For Patois, press two. For all other languages, press three. Please select one of the following options. Press one for requests, press two for thanksgiving, press three for complaints, and press four for others. Guess me which one most people press? Three. So if you're like a girlfriend of mine who had been praying for years for a soulmate and partner, looking outside in the dust of her life because she thought there was more light out there, rather than inside where she would find all of the God qualities she was seeking in a soulmate. She would have dialed, she would have pressed three. And of course, when you, she pressed three, what she heard was, your call is important to us, but all our angels are busy, so please hold. And you hold, and you hold, and you hold. 20, 1962 pass, and 1963 pass, and 1964 pass, and before you know what, it's 60 years of diamond jubilee of you, jubilee of you one. And then the voice would come on and say, our computer indicates that you have already been prayed for to, today, so please call back tomorrow. <laughs> so that's what happens when you believe that life happens to you. Now, friends, if we are fortunate enough to have discovered the science of mind, as I did in 1981, and began to and begin to understand that the beauty, I have to call it the beauty, and the absolute miracle of self-responsibility, when you can claim responsibility for what happens to you, then you begin to have a big aha, and you know that your life is not happening to you. <laughs> You believe that life is happening through you. And yes, that's a step, eh? From believing it's being done to you to understanding and believing that it happens through you. But there's another step. And that step is when you come to the deep realization, and perhaps you come to that realization after you have done some classes and you have made a regular spiritual practice um, and done Reverend John Scott's ass assignments faithfully, you come to the recognition that life not only happens through you, life happens as you. And when you come to come to predest, that life is celebrating itself, and that the universe, as your audience,